it's time for another illusion. And the other ones I've done, especially the great illusion, came directly out of a knitting book. And Ruth Ann Berry produces a couple books she has on knitting, and the designs on there are incredible. And the one I did was called The Great Illusion. I don't know what she called it, but she made it out of yarn. I made it out of wood. Well, today, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that this has been done in yarn before, but I found this image here on, I think it was called Wiki Illusions. I searched the internet, and that popped up. Well, I like that a lot, and I'm sure that shape has been done in the knitting world. Maybe not exactly like this, and I'm not going to use it exactly like this because none of the angles and the lengths make sense for me to do this with using simple geometry. So I'm not going to make it exactly like this, but it'll be very similar. And perhaps, if you're interested, I might make a special video showing how you can lay this out with a compass and a piece of paper and not even have to know what geometry is. So, if you're interested in that, let me know. I also have a special piece of wood I've decided to use for the background, and I'll show you that after we get going. So, speaking of getting going, I'm going to go over, rip up some pieces to uh, width, and then I'm going to cut some segments. I need to do that pretty fast, because yesterday it reached 104. Today it's threatening to do the same thing. So, I'll meet you over at the saw. So I'm cutting all the pieces to the width that I have on my drawing. It's very important that you do have those dimensions all the same on all the different woods and that it matches your drawing. But if you make the pieces, measure that width right away, and if it's not matching the drawing, adjust the drawing to the width that you have. You don't need to recut these. So the reason that that width is so important is because when you stack two next to each other, it might be larger or smaller than what you wanted. Plus when you cut the other pieces that butt up against this, again, those pieces may not fit because it might be too short or it might be too long. So they really do have to be as exact as you possibly can get them. Well, here's a batch of them. I've got another batch about that size sitting on my bench. Okay, I'm going to go get set up, but I'm going to have to do this tomorrow because it is now really hot. And we'll start assembling this, get it glued together. So I'll see you tomorrow. Oops, I meant to tell you what this piece of wood is I'm cutting here. This is actually a piece of Osage Orange sent to me by one of my viewers. I'll be using it again later, and I'll tell you all about it. Well, it's time to glue it together. I did a dry fit on these pieces and they really fit nice. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can get it glued together in the right order. I've made a little plot. Those numbers tell me where each particular wood goes because the paduke and the walnut, unsanded to me, they look fairly close. But I do have a little bit of color blindness, so I don't want to mess this up. So there are the pieces. I'm going to just start pulling them over here and looking at my little road map and see if we can get this done. I did have the thought of just placing them on that little plot that I made because it certainly would have lined them up. But they're going to line yourself up as soon as I get a rubber band around them. And I didn't want them getting stuck to that piece of paper. So let's we'll see how this works out. Yeah, I just checked to make sure I had the right piece of wood. Not really a serious color blindness. It's like some greens and browns. I don't know. I don't really care because I can see red, white, and blue, and that works for me. Here goes the little cross braces in there. I think I got them right. Kind <laughs> of certainly find out pretty soon. Yeah, it takes a little while to do it, and even with me running this at a lot faster pace, but it's fun. As you can see, I really picked up the pace here. I'll tell you what, it reached 104 again yesterday. And as I sit here editing this video, it is now 100 degrees. We have been on quite a heat spell. 
probably snow tomorrow. Who knows? It is Oregon. I'm using those little triangles of Osage Orange right now. And I'll tell you about them the next time I use it, which will be real soon. So, I'll see you tomorrow. I meant to show this block earlier. This is a piece of Osage Orange that viewer Louie from Spindle's Workshop sent this to me back in February. I had watched him make a turning out of it. I commented I thought it was really beautiful wood, but I don't think we have it here. To my surprise, a week later, this showed up at my doorstep. And wow, was I excited about that. Because there's a crack here and there and some uh, little void here that's rotted, and I probably would have done this anyways, I'm going to cut it into strips, make segments out of it. I think it is just going to be beautiful. It's going to work perfect for the illusion that I am working on and the colors for that. Just absolutely perfect. So before it gets hot, i got to do some cutting and uh, get ready to glue some things up. So, I'll see you shortly. The body of this illusion has six sides, which makes it a hexagon. And I'm now cutting six segments that will frame it. And those are trapezoids. And they have the exact same angle as all the rest of the pieces. I cut five of the pieces to match my little drawing. And I left one piece long, just in case I needed to make a small adjustment, which it was long because I left it long, took a little off, and it fits. Okay, I'm going to let this sit until tomorrow, and, uh, and we'll get some segments on here. Alright, I'm going to catch you up to what's going on here, and you really haven't missed anything. So, once the glue dried on this piece, I cut the corners off. I laid out how big of a circle I could get on there, and then I made two tenons like this, and I hot glued one to this side, had it in the chuck, I flattened what is now the bottom off, and then I hot glued the second tenon onto this back side here. And that's where we're at. And I did that so I could true this up and find out how big my segmented rings need to be. And the reason this is kind of critical right now is there wasn't a lot of wood in that block that didn't have a crack, so I had to take the leftovers from the segments that I wrapped around this shape and that's what you're looking at here the orangish colored so I took the scraps and in order to get a couple of rings I'll have to hot glue this to a longer scrap so that I can hold it on my wedgie sled and cut the pieces because they're too small to hang on to so I'm going to go do that right now and uh, I'll let you see some of that cutting and then gluing the rings up but also what I need to do is do a little sanding here and make sure that's flat. So I'll just take my little sanding board and go like so. It was pretty flat and uh, I'm not going to stop the lathe because I'm going to make you wait until the segments are on here and see it all at one time. Because I know once these segmented rings are on there, it's really going to be cool. It already is, but I'm going to let you wait just a little bit longer. So, I'm going to move over to the table saw now, and we'll start cutting segments. And then I'll glue them together, and then I'll work on this again tomorrow. So I just pointed out that I used 12 segments per ring. I played around with maybe doing 18 or 24. I decided with 12 because it actually took less material to make the rings. So I didn't have enough material to gamble with. So I went with 12 and it will also space around the 6 very nicely. What I just pointed out there, that's where I hot glued the short piece to a longer piece. Once I cut that, then I go ahead and I use the long piece until it gets short. And then I may have to hot glue that to another longer piece. I put a pencil line on the top of the piece. That way when I glue them together, I'll have the pencil line pointing up. If the saw blade was off just a little bit, then you're cutting the complementary angle on it. Because one of the pieces cut is cut from the left side of the blade, the other is from the right side. These pieces were cut on the wedgie sled, and all I did was hit the ends with sandpaper if they had anything sticking up, 
and glued them together. I did do a dry fit to make sure the joints close up but I've been using this wedgie sled for quite some time and the wedges that I made I trust that it's going to work but I still always do a dry fit just in case but uh, it just works if you've never used a wedgie sled before and you're into segments look it up it's well worth making. I'll go ahead and glue the second ring up off camera and I'll see you tomorrow and we'll start gluing these onto the main turn. Alright, it's time to glue it together and I flattened one side of each of the rings. I've located the center and I've got paper here to protect this surface and I've got marks to line things up like so. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on here and we'll get it clamped down. The only thing I forgot was to bring a little brush over, so we'll do it like this. That should do it. I'm going to grab a paper towel real quick. I like to let this sit for five minutes or ten minutes or so before I clamp it so it doesn't squirm around on me. So I'll come right back and we'll get the clamps on it. All right, this is all that I'll be gluing on here. I, I could put a, like a walnut ring on here. It would probably look good, but I don't want to break up the orange. In my mind, that illusion is going to be floating in an all orange surface. And I want to keep it that way. And it's going to sort of be a Thanksgiving type platter maybe. And I'll probably actually use it. Maybe put cookies in it. So that's the plans. And I don't have a lot to turn off here. I just got to round this ring up and then taper it and blend it in and then I'll do the inside. So I'm going to use my half inch bowl gouge for doing about 750 RPM. Alright, I got that bottom corner and the rest of it looks like I can sand that easy enough. I'm going to move back to the outside and uh, get that cleaned up a little bit and we'll get it all sanded and put a finish on it. Well, we're almost there. I do notice that that joint is not cleaned up, probably by a few thousands, but there's also some light tear out here from cutting it with the gouge. I think we have kind of different grain running around. So I'm going to clean it up with the negative root scraper which I just sharpened and I think we are just about there. There. 
this is going to be handled. I don't want any razor sharp edges on it. All right. I should save these. They're really cool, but I don't think I will. I'm going to get them cleaned up and we will sand this up and get a finish on it. I have the lathe running in reverse at 350 RPM for this diameter. That's pretty decent. I'm going to start my dust collector. Start sanding with 120 grit and I'll sand it up through 400 on the outside and the inside and we'll come back and I think I'm going to spray lacquer on this. Well, it's time for a finish, and I think it's only fair that you get to see that first coat go on. So, I'm going to stop it. You're going to see what it looks like now. That's the illusion. I think it turned out pretty nice. I'm going to use deft lacquer on it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and spray a coat on and see what it looks like. I like it. Alright, so honestly all the other coats will look just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and probably get at least five coats on there and I'll come back and we'll have a good look at this. Well, here it is. The illusion of a 3D cube and I think it looks like one. Looks like it's hollow on the inside there. Made from cherry, walnut, and paduke. And I used a piece of Osage Orange for the backdrop, which really makes that cube stand out. So it's 10 inches in diameter. It's an inch and three quarter inches tall. And I left the base around five eighths of an inch. And what I did on the bottom was, before I hot glued the tenon on this side, I cupped it out down here. I just dropped it down a little bit, about an eighth of an inch, so we had this outside rim for it to sit flat on. I used Def Lacquer, sprayed on about five coats, and then I polished it out with Axe Abrasive Paste and Polish, and I think it did a good job. And as you rotate that, you can really see the illusion. I think it's pretty cool. Really, really happy with how it looks. I did mention that uh, I could make a little video on this showing an easy way to make it so I'm not going to put any dimensions for this in this video if there's enough interest. What I plan on doing is showing how you can make this not even knowing what geometry is. Just using a compass and this is my homemade compass you can get a little metal ones and a pencil on the end you can draw this up. Very simple. But let me know in the comments if you'd like to see an easy way to make this illusion. And I'll get around to making a video for that. Special thanks to Louis for sending me the Osage Orange. I'll put a link in the description to his channel. I sure had a lot of fun making this and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, do me a favor. Click that like button and feel free to leave a comment. Both of those things will really help my channel grow. I do lots of different types of turnings and you never know what might be next. So be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. And a special thanks to all my current subscribers. You really mean a lot to me. So, till the next time, see you later.